Imanestianu is a painter who was raised in New York, Switzerland, my home country, and France. She has spent much of her adult life between Eastern Long Island and Venice, California. Being by the ocean is central to her work. Her abstract paintings are a sensory reading of her surroundings, their past and present, as it is felt in the vibrational tones of the landscape, the light, and the towns and cities where she lives. Irina received an MBA from Columbia Business School in Manhattan in 1989, and an MFA from Claremont Graduate School in California in 1998. Her work has been shown in museums, such as the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles, the Jones Center for Contemporary Art in Austin, Texas, and here at the Parish Art Museum. Her work is collected by numerous foundations, and she has shown in New York and Los Angeles. Please welcome Irina Alimanestiano. Good evening. I'm delighted to be here and grateful that we are able to have such gatherings. I'm a painter. My work is about relationship and connection, both at a macro and a micro level. The slides behind me cover various periods of my creative output. I started painting in earnest when I was pregnant with my first son. He is now 29, and I have been painting ever since. Over time, my style has evolved from representation to abstraction. As I painted, I came to realize that everything that we know and are is interconnected. Humans, plants, solar systems, minerals, sea waves are all part of one organism. We are part of the same scientific truths and collective unconscious. My childhood inadvertently led me to question and observe as I moved from one environment to another. I grew up partly in New York, France, and Switzerland, and I bounced from one to the other, being fully immersed in the cultures and landscapes. My parents, as Romanian refugees, wanted me and my siblings not to simply experience Europe, but to be imprinted by it. I literally went from dodging cow dung in the fields outside of our summer residence, a French chateau, to taking the bus to public school in Nyack, New York. The chateau in France had stunning 18th and 19th century paintings, a private chapel, Louis XV furniture. It was a step back in time that I cherished every summer until the age of 13. We picked mushrooms, swam in lakes, went to tea parties, and witnessed the cooks skin rabbits for dinner. Meanwhile, in Nyack, New York, in the fifth grade, I was bused to a large middle school and there quickly learned to navigate a racially charged playground. I was constantly adjusting to different mores. I had to learn the table manners of the French versus the Americans, a daunting task as the French were quite particular. On Sundays in New York, I attended Orthodox services. In France, we followed the Catholic traditions. The differences between their rituals presented another opportunity for me to make comparisons. My father was an inventor, a civil engineer focused on sustainability. His ideas reflected a future reality not the present one. And as such, with an inventor father, we went from well off to broke and back again. As kids, we understood financial instability. For me, it felt like I grew up between cultures, between convictions, between social and economic identities, the space between where ambiguity and observation lie. In graduate school, I began to explore archetypes and social structures using dolls and wallpaper as catalysts. I was interested in the similarities between peoples, their overlapping concerns and quests. For example, blind justice is broken into four quadrants with a circular overlap of different religious and moral imagery. I brought together Sufi trumpeters, angels at the gates of heaven, blind justice, and the Hellenistic owl of wisdom. The next painting is the portrait of a woman. It includes her profile, the classic Roman female nude, Victorian wallpaper, and a contemporary plastic toy. It's about what has shaped my perception of the female, about heritage as passed down through generations. It is about DNA and the history we carry in it. This led to further investigation into the idea of connection. I wanted to move back in time away from recorded history and work with the language of nature, a primordial language, the language that binds us. I believe there is a nonverbal language that has been evolving in our DNA at least since we were single cell organisms. This language is still in us. It is a language based on the senses. 
And so I built abstract miniature models and dioramas to experiment with shape and color as an intuitive language, and ultimately from which to paint. I explored the sensations and body memories I could evoke through these sculptures and paintings. The painting called Heart evokes spider, rose, seaweed, nest, butterfly. The following one evokes body parts, tonsils, mouth, intestines, or landscape, stalactite, mountain range. This group of paintings is an exploration into how charged organic forms are with subliminal references. My current abstractions are more immediate. They are sensory mappings of the energy I feel around me. It is the energy between things as well as the energy of things. I use all of my senses, eyes, ears, skin, nose, in a call and response that I do with the mark making as I paint. I try to access the primordial language of shape, color, and rhythm to express myself. I paint intuitively what I am experiencing subconsciously as well as consciously. I'll think about atoms, fish, wind, patterns of gas in the universe, the smell of the ocean. It is a dance between intent and random action. I'll lay down a mark, let it speak to me, and then I'll lay down another one. Through this process, I seek the harmony of nature, which is a beautiful balance of logical evolution and random moments of chaos. I work on several pieces at once, going from one to the other as I feel compelled. This offers distance so I can see where to go back in to the painting. Sometimes certain passages may feel incomplete, immature, so I'll add complexity, depth, more history. Sometimes single marks or clusters feel insincere, like they are trying to be something rather than just being. In that case, I'll place random marks. Sometimes I'll drag a brush across a section to break it up and give it new opportunity to establish harmony. As I paint, I move around the work table and approach the painting from various angles. There are moments when I want to remove gravity to allow the shapes to intertwine without the rule of external gravity, but rather an internal one. I'll imagine how gases and elements, atoms and molecules form and reform and evolve. How rivers bubble, trees decompose, and land masses move. Painting brings me closer to my center and to what grounds me in the world. That's it, thank you.